Hey peeps, Sarah here, and we are jumping right into this easy acrylic painting tutorial. If you are new to acrylics, then this is an excellent place to start. Today we are going to be working on a landscape, which I find to be easiest to start with. First, I am working on an 8x10 canvas textured paper, and I've taped off the edges to keep my paper secured and as flat as possible, and it also just gives it a clean finished edge when it's removed. Alternatively, you can do this on a canvas, and you can also make it whatever size you want. Now I'm working with a limited color palette, so I'm only using three colors. I have a white, an accent color, and black. This accent color can be any color you choose, but it works best if it's a dark and saturated color. Additional supplies include paper towels for dabbing and wiping off paint, two jars of water, one for cleaning, and one for mixing. Um, I have two brushes, I have a three quarter flat and a number three round. Basically you just want a larger brush to fill larger areas and a smaller brush for detailing. You can also use a palette knife which makes mixing a lot faster and cleaner. Um, and I also have two little bits of sponge where I have trimmed off the edges and you'll see that later. Um, I'm going to create a gradient for the sky. So I start with a decent amount of white and just take a tiny dab of my accent color. So notice how small of an amount I'm starting with. It really doesn't take much to add some color to white. And something to remember is that paint always dries darker and you can always add more color later. Um, and I'm mixing with my palette knife and you can see how easy it is to just scrape off the excess paint and then wipe it off on my paper towel. Uh, then I'm not loading my brushes with a bunch of unmixed color. So as I start applying, I am dipping my brush in my water. Now this will just help keep the paint wet which makes it easier to blend and keeps the paint from getting too tacky. Um, it also kind of just helps with the brush, keeping the brush cleaner in the end as well. Now I'm going to mix my next color and I'm adding a little more white and a little bit more color than last time. Remember it's always easier to add more color. As I apply I'm still dipping my brush in the water then as I work towards my first color I'm going to overlap it to blend and as you work into your lighter color using less pressure creates a more even blend. Now I'm going to just continue with the same pattern. Mix a darker color, dip in the water, apply it, and overlapping my previous color. We want a nice smooth transition from top to bottom. Now I could have started from the top, but we're going to be painting more in the foreground, so I want that bottom section to have more time to dry. And I'm still working on a very wet surface, and you can choose to let each layer dry uh, more than I am but um, I wanted to show you this in something that was close to real time. But when you're mixing your sky, you do want that gradient to be nice and smooth so it is easier to work with it when it's wet. Um, but when you start adding in more stuff in the foreground, that's when you would probably want to let it dry. Once I get to the top, I'm applying my accent color completely unmixed till I get a nice contrast, a nice saturated color, always remembering to overlap that previous color just a little bit to blend it. Now we're going to create a starry sky. This technique is super fun and so easy. I take a small dab of paint and I mix a bit of water in it. Now we just want enough water to thin out the paint a little bit, but we don't want it too watery or it just makes kind of a runny mess on your background. Um, it should be slightly creamy. So then I just load my brush and I'm going to lightly flick the bristles so I get a spattering of stars across my background. This is one of my absolute favorite things to show new painters. I want to create a little bit of depth, so I'm going to mix a light color for some hills. They don't need to be perfect, but your first set can start about a quarter of the way up your canvas. Then as I create the next layer of hills, I'm going to mix it a little darker. 
Generally speaking, the farther away something is, the lighter it appears. Then in my third layer, it's just my pure accent color, and notice I'm overlapping and varying the height of my hills just to add some interest. Now you'll notice I ended up with a little bit of a mistake in here. I had some water that dripped and the paint is still very wet, so it picked up some of the paint and I had a hard time kind of patching it. So you can avoid this by letting the layers dry a little bit in between. But let's be honest, most of us aren't that patient. Now for my final layer, we are going in with black. Now you can mix a little amount of your accent color so that it doesn't look too gray. Now to add a bit of interest, I'm also going to put a silhouetted tree in the foreground. First I'm taking my large brush and I'm just slightly mapping out the shape of my tree by dabbing the branches. Now you can take a look at some pictures of real trees to help you with this if you want, but a few things to remember is that you don't want things to look too symmetrical. The more organic you can make your lines, the better. And also try to remember that this is not a flat tree. There are branches that come forward and others that are more in the background and some that jut out at a certain angle. Um, it's a very, uh, again, organic kind of thing. Once I have the shape of the tree mapped out, then I go in with my smaller brush and refine the shapes, always tapering down to the ends, and then adding some smaller branches just jutting out here and there. Now that we have the skeleton of our tree, we can flush it out with some leaves. Here I'm just going to take my sponge piece and dip it in the paint and then stamp it on my palette a little bit to remove some of the excess paint. And then I'm just going to start stamping on the edges of the branches to fill it out with some leaves. Some things to remember is that you want to leave some holes where leaves might not be as thick, but the thickest parts will be at the ends of the branches. And you can rotate and tip your sponge in different directions to make it a bit more random. Now at this point you could call your piece done and it will look fantastic, but if you want to add some additional, um, additional accents, you can always take your sponge and stamp in some lighter colors around the edges for a little bit of a backlight or a bounce light, and you can also add a little bit of on the grass as well. You can also take your small brush with some white and create a highlighted edge around your branches. I just did this on one side so it looked like I had one light source off to the side. A lot of times in a setting you will actually have multiple light sources, which can make a piece look very interesting. Now my final technique I'm going to show you is just that you can actually take your palette knife and scrape some of the paint away to create some highlights on some blades of grass for a little bit more detail. And now for the most satisfying part, <laughs> removing the tape. 
I love seeing that final clean edge. It really just makes the piece look finished. So once you're done, make sure you allow at least a day or two for your piece to dry. Okay, peeps, thanks for watching. And if you tried this, you can tag me on Instagram at Sparrow Springs so that I can see what you guys did. Um, and this is fun because you can literally do this in any color you want, like whether it's like green, like pink, magenta, whatever, purple. It's like this sort of composition looks really cool in a lot of different colors. So give it a shot. Also, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe and like this video. It helps me out more than you know. And my new wall art collection is now out. You can check out the link for that in the description. So that's all for now. I'll see you later, peeps.